Uh, my name is Anthony Bard. Um, I was born in London, in Carshalton. And kind of my upbringing, I came to America when I was 11 years old. Um, my mom married an American guy, so I, I lived here for about seven, seven years before I went off to college. And then going to college for a year, I decided I wanted more than football, so more out of football. So instead of just going to staying in college, I said, you know, what, I'm going to go to London. I'm going to try to go back as a footballer. And that led me to the career I had. But that was, was my intention as a young kid, was to be, be the best I could be. I think my love for football, if it's possible, started before I was born because I started kicking in my mother's womb. But I think really, ever since I could look back, I just love football. I love. I used to roll up socks and play them in the house and just... Mom got mad if we had balls, so I, I would get socks and roll them up and play with those. So I remember that when I was three, four, five years old. So as long as I can remember, I love playing football. Um, so starting off, I played for Dallas Texans was the first team I played for when I came back from England when I came the first time. Um, I played in Dallas Texans South for maybe two or three years and then I moved over to DFW Tornadoes which is actually, I used to train on the fields that now we practice at when I was a teenager so that's kind of cool. Um, and then from there I did in my last year I played with Solar and State Cup and stuff like that with um, the, the guys over there, the 93 team. And then from there, I just kind of went to college because that was the kind of route they had, but I wanted more. So like I kind of touched on before, I just wanted to go in to Europe to see how far I could take it. But that was kind of my career as a teenager growing up here. So I actually um, started off in lower leagues in England. There was like seventh division. I was there with Tootin and Mitchum. That was the first team I went to. From there, I went to Cray Wanderers. From there, I went to Bromley. And from there I went to Barnet and I kind of just went up through the ranks and then from there um, I got in touch through well, Gibraltar and I got in touch with kind of each other via Twitter and that's kind of how it took me over there. And then from there I played for Manchester for six months and then Lincoln came in and I spent the best part of four years there at Lincoln. And that was kind of where I made my mark as a, as a player. Um, I think my fondest memory as a player was probably by probably my last ever professional match, which was the one in Ireland. I knew I was going to play against. I knew that was going to be my last professional match. All those fond memories that ever since I wanted since a young boy, I remember getting to that game, and that was that was the last time I actually said I'm gonna I'm gonna go in as a player. And I think as a coach. I don't, really, I don't really think I have a, a fondest memory, but I think probably the one that sticks out really the most is probably taking the first team to Gibraltar. And kind of recognizing that when I left Gibraltar to, be, to kind of build a club, I really had no idea what that meant. But two or three years later to bring a team of 14, 15 year olds back to Gibraltar to play against their national teams. I think that was my fondest memory as a coach slash running a club. So um, I wanted to be a coach probably around 21 to 22 years old. I, I realized very quickly that really when, I'd say maybe around 23, 24 actually, because I think when I was um, playing I quickly realized that I was gonna cap out at my max capacity when I was about 23, 24, because that's when I really got to know the highest levels of, of what the players were capable of. And I said, you know what, really, I could reach maybe a certain level, but I can't get to the top level because I also didn't have the training for when I was a young kid. So really, I started getting the proper training around 21 years old. And by that time, it was so late that I wasn't going to make it to the to the top 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 level of playing. So I realized very quickly that I wanted to become a coach because with the experience of me as a player playing at a you know very high level but not at the highest highest level all the time being one of the best players I realized that with my experience as a player at those levels and I could recognize what it could take players to get there 
I quickly shifted my focus. Probably around 23, 24 is when I started to realize I just want to be a full-time coach. Coaching has taught me that things in life take a lot to fight for. And the biggest, the biggest thing coaching has taught me is from a coaching aspect that and even from like managing not just players but from everything what it entails it's actually being patient and believing in the process that you're trying to do and really getting people to invest in what your project is and I think the biggest thing for me which I've always learned is being honest and not not lying to people and telling them you know straight and bluntly and this and this is what it is this is what I think this capable of and this is what they're maybe not capable of but this is how we can help them and I think that's been my biggest thing that I've learned is, is the soccer part is easy, is easy for me and I think that's the easiest part but I think it's everything else which entails that. I think that's kind of taught me a life lesson of you have to really believe in what you're doing in order for then others to be able to believe in what you're doing. I'll tell the upcoming football generation that for instance when I was a, when I was a young boy playing I, I always wanted to be a professional footballer. So I always grew up wanting to be a professional and, and driving every single day towards that. But I think what I would tell them is not to get so caught up on the end goal, but to get caught up on day to day, what do I need to do to get there? Because I never thought I'd get to the levels I got to. But then I also realized when I got to that level, what actually it required to get even to the highest of that specific level. So, and I was so late in my development as a player that it was, it would have been, I would have been so disheartened if in, in my whole mind, I didn't believe in the journey, but I only believed, it, believed in the destination. So when I realized that the destination maybe might have been out of my reach, playing in Premier League or La Liga or being on dominating the international teams at my, my, at my level, if I didn't get obsessed with the journey, then now I wouldn't enjoy what I'm doing, which is a different, my journey has changed. So I would tell the kids not to get so focused on the destination, but to get fo focused and obsessed with the journey. Because once you do that, your destination may change, but you still have work, you still have workmanship in your, in your body to make it happen.